Okay, before we move on to the next point, let us have some more point to ponder. On the basis of our discussion, I would like you to find out at least one transdisciplinary research project that involves and integrates your discipline to deal with a global issue. Having located such a project, study it to identify the aspects we have discussed so far and write a brief review of it. Our discussion so far has been descriptive, informative and theoretical. Now we will move to the implied side of module or the applied side of this module. In order to nurture the transdisciplinary research culture among young learners and young scholars, we need to bring about a change in our teaching approach. Classroom practices shape necessary attitudes and nurtures aptitude which contributes to research readiness among young scholars. There has been a shifting conceptualizations of the role of research and teaching. It has highlighted the need for academics to adopt a more interactional approach to their practice. Research no longer involves simply discovering or creating knowledge, but also the exchange of that knowledge through engagement with diverse audience. Likewise, teaching is more than transmission of information. It involves supporting the active engagement of students with their learning. This interconnection between teaching and research provides us with a model through which we can explore ways of infusing research and inquiry into the curriculum and student experience. There have been three major practices which we can take into consideration. These are one, uh, research based teaching, two, project based teaching or three, problem based teaching. Well, before we discuss these practices, I would like to state right at the outset that there are no watertight compartments between these practices. Uh, they share common traits while varying in terms of focus. So, let us take a look at these practices. What does research based teaching mean? There are different names in the literature for what we are going to describe. There are certain umbrella concepts such as uh, teaching research nexus, intervening teaching and research and research informed teaching. Decker and Wolf observe that research based teaching is one of the crystallized forms thereof uh, together with research engaged teaching and research intensive learning, inquiry based learning and students as researchers pedagogy. There is a widely agreed definition of research based teaching. It means that students carry out research in their courses independently and with an open outcome. So, what does it do? This helps to internalize and practice research conducts and methods. Skills such as formulating a precise question and processing and monitoring a research process. Students attain abilities in dealing with uncertainties independence, teamwork and organization, organizational skills. This form of teaching and learning focuses on the joint acquisition of new knowledge by teachers and students. This requires teachers to reflect on their role as teachers as well as learners. There has been a paradigm shift at global level in the expectations from learners which includes the ability to solve problems, flexibility, thinking critically and creatively, using knowledge and skills in new situations, collaboration and communication skills and basic literacy in technology. Besides, as Decker and Wolf observe, 
academics also expect that students by engaging them in research can better develop highly valued competencies such as critical attitude, a humble attitude because researchers accept that there is nothing like the truth to think independently and to express thoughts clearly. So, how is research based teaching designed and implemented? Let us see. A study of the existing practices at the University of Illinois mentions 8 steps in which this is done. Step 1, students are provided with an overview of the basic facts, terms and ideas related to the discipline. Step 2, students learn about research findings in the subfield through lectures and readings dedicated to current research. Step 3, students discuss and critique research findings and approaches in the discipline or subfield. Assignments include literature reviews or summaries. Step 4, students learn some research methodologies, engage in limited applications of those approaches in course assignments such as statistical analysis. Step 5, students learn in a course dedicated to the research methodologies, engage in extensive applications of a variety of approaches. Step 6, students engage in faculty designed and laid original uh, research such as replications of existing studies. Step 7, students engage in faculty designed and laid original research such as research related to faculty projects and conducted in faculty labs. And step 8, students engage in student designed and laid original research such as a senior thesis or capstone project. Decker and Wolf offer a list of research based teaching activities for students. These include 1, interviewing and reporting the re interview findings to other fellow students, 2, studying and discussing authentic scientific research articles, 3, writing, presenting and discussing a review of scientific research article, 4, writing and presenting a state of the art paper, 5, deriving hypothesis from this state of art paper, 6, formulating a research question, 7, developing a full research proposal, 8, collecting and analyzing data to answer a research question, 9, writing a paper about one's own research, 10, presenting this research paper and or a poster of the research at a student research conference, 11, publishing an article in an undergraduate or postgraduate research journal, 12, reporting about the research on a research blog and 13, writing a reflective assessment of one's own learning process.